Hi, Chris Albanese, Director of Education for Real Estate Academy of Orlando. The next problem here we're gonna be looking at is gonna be calculating the homestead tax deduction on a piece of real property. So let's take a look at our question. Uh, property is located in Orlando, Florida in Orange County. The city tax rate is 8.2 mils. The county tax rate is 9.1 mils. And the school tax rate is five mils. The homeowner is a widower and has qualified for a homestead tax exemption. The assessed value for the home is $185,000. What will the ad valorem property taxes be for this homeowner? So let's take a look at this. Uh, some important things we need to look at right in the question itself. Starting with the city tax rate is 8.2 mils. So we need the millage rate for each of the city, the county, and the schools. Ultimately, we're gonna use it at the end to figure out what our tax rate is. So we need our millage. We've got our county millage is 9.1 mils. And then we've got our school tax is going to be five mils. So in just a few moments, we'll take a look at converting the millage rate from the mill as we see it to a decimal so we can actually use this in our calculation. All right, next we wanna find out, we know that there's a homestead exemption here because they tell us that the property owner does have a homestead exemption. Now what that means is this is a homeowner, this is their primary residence, and they have gone through and actually claimed this as their homesteaded property. That does give them some additional tax breaks here. And we'll take a look at what that means on the next page. Uh, but what we also see is that this is a widower. Now we're gonna to need to know from our textbook and from the studying that we've been doing that the widower will qualify for an additional $500 tax exemption. Now this is on top of their additional exemptions. So we'll have to remember to include that in our final figures. Uh, next we also need to understand what is the word ad valorem. Ad valorem, this is just a fancy Latin, uh, basically means according to value. So ad valorem is according to value. And all that really means is the value of the tax is based on the value of the property, which is why we start with our assessed value here. Finally, that most important number of $185,000. So let's move on to the next page and take a look at how do we solve this problem here. So we're gonna begin with putting in our assessed value of $185,000. So 185, so 185 is our assessed value. Now, when we start breaking down the taxes here, we always wanna get down to finally our taxable value. The taxable value is what we're actually gonna to use to calculate our taxes with that millage rate. But before we get there, we've gotta figure out first what that taxable value is. Now, the first thing we wanna look at is the homestead exemption. If you notice here, we've got part one and we've got part two. Now, everybody gets part one as long as your property is valued over $50,000. So uh, we're gonna assume all properties here are gonna be over 50, so everybody gets part one. Now, the part one exemption is $25,000. So we'll put that in here, 25,000 for city, 25,000 for the county, and 25, thousand for the school districts. Now part two is an additional $25,000. Now you will only get that if your property is valued over $75,000. In this case, assessed value is 185. So yes, this homeowner will get part two. But if you notice, there's a big red X there regarding the school district. Nobody gets part two when we're talking about the school district. The schools assume that they need the money. They're not gonna have a separate uh, second tax exemption for the school district when we talk specifically about homestead exemptions. So for part two for this homeowner, there's gonna be an additional $25,000 off of the assessed value for city, another 25,000 off for the county, but no additional deduction off for the school zone, okay? All right, so now we've got our city and our county and we are complete with our homestead deductions now. So we've got $50,000 off the assessed value for city, $50,000 off for county, $25,000 off for the schools. That is the maximum anyone can ever get off of their uh, taxes for the homestead deduction. 
All right, next we're going to look at the uh, uh, moving over to the next column, the additional exemptions. Additional exemptions, we would add in anything else that the homeowner might qualify for. There may be a $5,000 deduction uh, if somebody is 10% uh, disabled from a uh, military or a veteran's uh, status. There would be $500 if somebody was a widow or a widower or legally blind or uh, permanently disabled. So we'll add an additional exemption here. Remember, this homeowner in our example was a widower, so there would be an additional $500 off there. So 500 500 and we'll also get the extra 500 off of the school taxes as well. So it's only when we're talking about the homestead exemption that we only get part one for the schools. Now we move on to our taxable value, and here we're going to calculate what is the assessed value, the 185, minus homestead part one, minus homestead part two, minus any additional exemptions. So we'll take a look at uh, our taxable values here for the city. City taxes are going to add up to 134, 500. The county is going to be exactly the same, 134, 500. But the school is always going to be $25,000 higher because we're going to not have part two off of these schools here. So this tax value will be 159, 500. All right. So now we know what the taxable value is. We're going to take our taxable values. We're going to move this over a couple screens here. And this will be how would we figure out the actual tax uh, amount that we're going to pay. So we're going to put in our city tax here, which was our taxable value, 134500 We'll do the same thing for the county. And then we'll do the same thing for the school. Remember, it was 25,000 higher. 159,500. Okay. So if you notice, now we've got everything we need to do. Uh, now we have almost everything we need to do to calculate our uh, taxes here. But the next thing we're going to be looking at is what exactly is our millage rate. Now the mills that they give you in the example haven't been converted to a decimal, so we can't actually use these to calculate with yet. So let's take a look at uh, converting our millage rate to decimals. All right, we're going to start over here. We're not using the millage rates that we have in our example just yet. I just want to give you a primer on the millage rate and how do we calculate these. Well, whenever we hear the word mills, we're talking the thousands place. Okay, so let's take a look at the mills and we're going to convert the mills to decimals. I'm going to zoom in first here so we can take a real good look at exactly what we're doing. All right, so we've got one mill here. The one, we can imagine that there is a uh, invisible decimal right there to the right of the one. Now, whenever we're calculating millage from like from this format into a decimal, we're going to move our decimal place three places to the left. So let's take a look. One, two, three, and then add a zero if necessary. So in this example, one mil equals 0 0.001. So we've got 0 0.001 equals one mil. All right, let's take at our next take a look at our next example down. We've got 10 mils. Again, imagine there's that invisible decimal place there. 10.0. Well, again, we're going to move our decimal place three places to the left. So one, two, and three, and put a zero if necessary. Here we have 0 0.010 equals 10 mils. We just now have it in a decimal format. Now, if you notice the 0 0.010, this would be mathematically the same thing as 0 0.01. It wouldn't change your answer if you calculated 0 0.010 or 0 0.01 in your calculator. However, we're always, when we're speaking of mils, we're always going to write our numbers out at least to the three uh, decimal places there, just to make sure it's clear to everybody involved that we're talking about millage. All right, let's look at 100 mils. Again, we're going to move our decimal place, which is invisible, three places to the left. So one, two, three. In this case, we don't have to add any zeros. So this would be 0 0.100 would be 100 mils. Now, we never would have 100 mils in the tax rate, 
because the legislated tax rate in the state of Florida is 10 mils. So we'll never see a tax a millage rate over 10 mils. Uh, but this is a good example to see what's happening. Let's look at the next one down, 1.5 mils. Well, we've already got the decimal there. It's not invisible, but we're not doing anything differently than we did previously. We're taking the decimal that is there, moving it three places to the left. So one, two, three, this would be point zero, zero, one, five. So we'll change that to point zero, zero, one, five. If you notice, it's very similar to what we had up on our first example of point zero, zero, one. We just added the point zero, zero, one, five. All right, finally, let's look at a uh, millage rate that looks a lot more complicated. We've got 10.598 mils. Now, again, we would never have a millage rate over 10 mils in Florida, but for a good example here, we would take the decimal that is there, same as we did previously, move the decimal three places to the left. Add a zero if necessary. So we get 0 0.010598. So if we were putting this in our calculator, we would put point zero one zero five nine eight it looks a lot more complicated but it's really not all we did was take our decimal place where it is move it three places to the left so now let's look back at our question we'll use the millage rates that we have so we have millage rates uh city taxes of 8.2 mils county taxes of 9.1 mils and the school board taxes of five mils so let's convert these here to the decimal so we can use these to solve our answer. Now the 8.2 mils, we're gonna take the decimal, move it three places to the left. One, two, three. So we get 0 0.0082 mils. So 0 0.0082. Our 9.1 mils becomes one, two, three places to the left, 0 0.0091. So 0 0.0091, and then finally the five mils, since the decimal is hidden there, it's right there behind the five, move it three places to the left, one, two, three, and add the decimal and the extra zeros. So we got 0 0.005, that is five mils in the decimal format. So now we've converted our decimals, let's move them back over to our solution. So we're gonna take the city uh, taxes. We said that those were going to be 0 0.0082. So that would be 0 0.0082. The county taxes were 9.1 mils. We converted those to 0 0.0091. And then the school taxes was five mils. So we're gonna convert that to 0 0.005. 0 0.005. Now we've got our taxable value, and now we've got our millage rate in a decimal. Now all we have to do is take our taxable value times our millage rate, and that equals our tax amount. So let's go ahead and do each of these. So we've got 134,500 times 0 .0082, and that's going to give us, and that's gonna give us $1,102.90. One one zero two point nine zero. Now we're going to do the same thing for the county taxes. The ta county taxes are one thirty four five hundred times our millage rate here point zero zero nine one point zero zero nine one, and we have a tax amount here of twelve twenty three ninety five one two two three point nine five. And then finally, we have our school taxes, which is now 159,500. Make sure you use your uh, new number for school since it is different from city and county. And then multiply this times 0 0.005. We have a tax uh, rate or tax value here of 797.50. So 797.50. So, so now all we have to do is Add them all up, 1102.90 plus 1223.95 plus 797.50 gives us a total tax of 3124.35. And that will be our answer. 
So this homeowner, their total taxes for the year for their ad valorem taxes, according to value, is going to be $3,124.35. So I hope that helps you answer this homestead tax exemption question. If you have any questions, please let us know at info at reaorlando.com or visit us online at realestateacademyoforlando.com. Have a great day. Thanks.